You want to see a major gangland criminal like Mike Sullivan back on the streets just to save your poxy little informer the bother of testifying. He's very upset about the person who phoned on him. Mikey knows it's me, right? I'm never going to be fine anyway. Callie's brother's been shot. They don't think he's going to make it. You found the gun. So all we need now is Mikey. You want me to give my brother up? He's asking a lot. Looks like we got the address right this Mikey. time, Mikey. Uh, you won't have met DC DePauli, she's just joined us from the Met. Superintendent Roberts, area commander. Came as soon as I could. What the hell happened, Howard? Well, we arrested Michael Sullivan in a high rise in Everton. We cuffed him, and he jumped out the window. Good oh, God. Who was with him? DC Mark Callahan. That's a good bit, sir. Sullivan had just shot Callahan's brother the night before. He was an informant. You don't think there's any possibility no. Callahan might have... You don't know that, Jones? I do. He weren't in the room. Didn't need to be. You should have been, though, shouldn't you? All right, let's just get the statements in and see where we are. We've got an inquest and an inquiry to get through now. Any idea who they're bringing in on this, sir? <laughs> Frank Galliano's coming over from Manchester. Terrific. We'll get no favours. Let me just have your statements as soon as they're ready. I want it done by the book. Do you hear? Frank Mad Dog Galliano, Mason Lake Preacher and Queen. Terrific. Dear Jones, can I have a quick word? Yeah. Not here. Um, we were just wondering how you were going to approach your statement. With full and due regard to my own arse. Look, Paulie, it's like this. Me and Joe can't say we saw Sullivan jump because we were with Howard. But you, right? You were out the corridor. You could say you saw him. But I didn't. Okay. Well, then, you could say that you could see Callie. And that he didn't go anywhere near Mikey. Look, Frank. I'm as sorry as you are that Callie's in the shit. But I'm not going to lie about this. You believe him, though, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, I do. Then what's the problem? If you believe he didn't throw Mikey out, then... Why don't you just say so? Because I didn't see what happened. Who gives a shit about that? They're going to crucify him and kick him off the job, and that's if he's lucky. Is that what you want, eh? Look, from now on, there's them and us. And Frank is us, and Callie is us, and I am us. And all the other bastards is them. So, which are you? lie on oath for anyone. What? Never mind.
How is he? No change. Look, I want him moved. Moved? Where? A different room, anywhere. Did you work the poorly over last night? Well, we were just trying to help. She wasn't exactly a cooperative. This is my screw up. You should keep out of it. All right, Kelly. How's your brother? Still there. Okay, men in black are here today, so have your notebooks and your diaries ready. They'll be wanting to follow up your statements. So make yourselves available and no attitudes. Otherwise, business as usual. Right, Kelly. Oh, listen, girl. Well, what's that, Alice? Conviction for prostitution. Okay, mostly they turn up sleeping out of friends. Now and then they turn up dead. Parents are down in three. She went out last night, never came back. She said she was going to see her boyfriend. Sean O'Connell works in the garage. I went over there, he wasn't in. Lucky for him, really. So you haven't spoken to him? He's a liar. There's no point speaking to him. He's the one that got her into trouble. The prostitution. He's a druggie. God knows what else. If he's touched us, help me go out. So Hannah lives with you? Last few months. She lost her job in the cafe, had a fight with the liar and came home. He's been inside. Supply. Has she gone missing before? No. She's not been that well. She stayed in a lot watching telly every evening. Would you say that she's been depressed? No, no. I mean, she'd never do anything. I mean... <laughs> She's only 18. Look, I know it must seem like the end of the world right now, but most of the kids we go looking for turn up just fine. Yeah, she'll turn up. She always does. And someone will run you home. Listen, thanks for your time. Go. Most kids don't turn up just fine. Kelly, are you pissed off with me? No. Would you have lied for me? You better go see the boyfriend. Wally. Yeah? An assault down the south end. Dealer. What's his name? Uh, Sulis. Yeah, that's him. Where are we on it? it? It sort of slipped my mind. Fit it in, tie it up, okay? Sure. If they find out you threw Sulis out of the window the day before Mikey took his dive, you're finished. How are they going to find out? Fine. It's not my neck. I mean, I'm not going to tell them, are you? How was it? Bastards. They want you next. I spoke to my guy in the Met last night. About to Pauly. They really racist her. That must have pissed you off. It did, yeah. On the other hand... Well, yeah, 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 I'll hold. He reckons she's a bit of an info, right? Apparently she got caught under a DI in the back of a car while they were on surveillance. Yeah? Yeah. Ah, it's a wind-up. Uh, that is what I said, but he said not. It's probably a load of bollocks, though. I shouldn't have mentioned it. Are you overly worried about her reputation all of a sudden? Yeah, OK. But it's not fair, is it? I mean, it's always all right for you blokes, but not us girls, you know what I mean? Oh, Frank? Mm-hmm. Keep it to yourself. Yeah, sure, sure. I'll keep it to myself. Yeah, bet 
Look, she's been reported missing, okay? She came round last night. And then what? And then she went. Where? Out. And she went out? Yeah. Is your boss in? No. Does he know where you've been for dealing smack? We just want to know where she was going, that's all. She didn't say. She was pretty pissed off. Wanted to borrow a hundred quid. Wouldn't say why. So did you have a fight or something? She was moaning, you know, she got on my nerves. Yeah, of course. You don't look bothered about it. If anyone's here, it's that I'll kill them. It's funny, because you weren't that fussy when you put her on the game, were you? I had nothing to do with that, you know, kid. Nothing. So did you give her the money? Did she say why she wanted it, where she was going? Look, once, right, she's getting the bus on from the cream. Hooks up with this lesbo chick. Manicurist from Venezuela. Next I is, she's getting deported from Czechoslovakia. <laughs> Czechoslovakia copper. <laughs> she turn up. So what time did she leave? Bar nine. Mimi mate spent the rest of the night new club in Southport. Stayed till it shut. But you stayed till it shut. Yeah. I want names, addresses. Callum, do I look like a busy? You stand up a mile. <laughs> Oh, this case is bollocks. I've got a bad feeling about it. Do you want to go and check out his story? No, I want you to check his story. Well, you do what exactly? Oh, look, if you get caught in a few, listen, now, that's throw away the key. Fine. Too. You shouldn't have come here, Mark. We found him where you said. He was asleep. We cuffed him. And then I took him through to get his clothes on. He told me about... how your half fella smashed up your bike with his car. And how he went for you with his belt for leaving your bike in the garage like that. And then he said, he said, red sky at night, shepherd's delight. And he just went out of the window. I never thought he'd do that, John. I couldn't stop. I was too far away. You said you'd look after them. Give them to me. They'll be okay. That's what you said. You did say that, didn't you? You put your Patrick in the hospital, and now Mikey in the morgue. You sold your brother to me because he was a liability, and you wanted to get rid of him. You were just waiting for the right price. She's doing here. Not here. Not ever. 
I'll pick it up. Liam, pick it up. Pick it up. I'll pick it up. Take them to the rooms. Take them to the rooms. You want to blame someone, blame me. It's all my fault what happened, not Patrick's. He didn't want to grasp Mikey up, I made him do it. You're asking me if it's all over between us and your Patsy. It's not his fault. None of it. I've got stuff to do. And finally, you say you were here when you heard Constable Callahan shout no. Yes. Why didn't you accompany your fellow officer and the suspect? As the log points out, sir, we split up to search the premises. The suspect was handcuffed and the officer is very experienced. A serious mistake, in retrospect. Anyone can point out the obvious with the benefit of hindsight. Callahan's a moody bastard. But he'd no sooner push a handcuffed man out of a window than you would. Remember that. And we made a mistake, yes. Like people do every day of the week. Sometimes it doesn't make any damn difference. And sometimes people's lives are never the same again. Remember that too. Anything else? Okay. I've buttered him up a bit. It should be okay. fine. Hey. Could be important. You got anywhere with the boyfriend? No. His chums backed up his story. They went to the club, had a few quiet drinks. No big deal, went home. They didn't see much point in ringing the club. But I did anyway. At about 10.30 last night, the air conditioning sprang a leak and dripped fluid onto the dance floor. A 16-stone girl slipped on it and broke her right leg. Her boyfriend then attempted to assault the manager, at which point a secondary leak fused the main junction box, plunging the entire club into darkness. A small conflagration broke out, the fire brigade were called, and the place was evacuated. No. Yeah. But hey, maybe our boys didn't feel that that was worth mentioning. Pick the boyfriend up, get Frank out the pub, take him with you. Well, what if he's not in the pub? Check the morgue. Right, thanks, eh? Hey? Our body's turned up in a wood near St. Helens. Fit your girl to a tea. Nice. Mr. Pawley. Mr. Sullivan, what are you doing here? Well, in case you haven't heard, my brother's just been killed in police custody. You've got to go. Yes, I'm afraid you'll find Callie pretty hard work at first. He's a morose sort of guy on the surface, but a lot of fun once you get to know him. And underneath it all, very emotional. Now, if you'll excuse me, I've got a statement to make. Joe! Where have you been? What's up? We've got a dead body over at St. Helens. Could be Aunt Collins. Get the parents over there, do an ID. Why me? Thanks. And Joe? Yeah? I was over at Allerton this morning, and I was sitting in the canteen, and suddenly I heard this fat CID bloke talking to the desk sergeant. And he was telling him how our constable de Pauli was transferred over here because of a scandal involving oral sex with a superior officer. Whilst on duty. Allerton? God, that's fast. <laughs> oh, look, it, it was only a joke. I told Frank some bollocks I was supposed to have picked up from this guy I know in the Met. I mean, I never thought he'd actually believe it. I was only winding him up. <laughs> I 
Okay. Yep. I'm sorry if it's got out of hand. Yeah. Because our Frankie is usually so discreet. It's still 30 down Scotty Road, you know. It's on its break. All says he'll be back in an hour. Might as well wait then. Someone a little less obvious than Callie, can I borrow your tank? Yeah, sure. Just give us the damn keys. No need to grab them. Anyway, sorry to break it to you like this, but you've got to leave town for a bit. Now. What? Six months should do it. Get off your head! We're not going anywhere. Not now. Never. Oh, I'm sorry you feel like that. Because, you know, if Callie found out that you set up his brother to get shot by Mikey Sullivan, I just don't know what he'd do. It's not what you're on about, love. I can't help wondering if John Sullivan might not sort of blame you too. You stupid bastard! Hey, you had nothing to do with me. It was all my he's idea. Don't worry about the expenses. This one's on me. A friend of mine will meet you at Houston. All right, thanks. Thanks very much. Have a nice time. <sighs> hey, ultimate kids. Yeah, no, that complicated little peddly thing. Yeah, all right, Frank. Calm down. What's happening? He's not back yet. And the dead girls turn out to be Anna Collins, yeah? No. No. Aye, aye. I'd like to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you do not mention when questioned something you later rely on in court. For anything you do say, maybe give it an evidence. <coughs> Sean, but why didn't you just tell us what happened? I never told you that. I never told you that. Look, Sean, it's okay, but we know you weren't at the club, were you? I'm just doing a chemist on that George Street. So, where's Alice? Where's Alice? 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 No body, no suspect, no crime. Yeah. And the girl's still missing. Did you get anything out of the boyfriend? No. We think he was telling the truth. Well, about Anna, anyway. But you did charge him for breaking and entering into the chemist, didn't you? Yeah. Seems a bit unfair. He was dead upset, wasn't he? What do you mean unfair, Frank? Have you seen John Sullivan? He was standing just over there a minute ago. Dead. Better find him. Is all this yours? Very pleasant. They're all looking for you. Oh, really?
On behalf of the family, Callie, I'd hope you come on a funeral tomorrow. In fact, I expect to see you there. Are you serious? Well, he hasn't done anything to be ashamed of. Has he? Translate. He's just messing with your head. Why does he expect you to come to the funeral? We're cousins. Sort of. And I hope none of you have put that on your statements. This mess is complicated enough as it is. Big city, small town. And another pint of lager, please. I phoned Anna's parents, kept them up to date. Like the idea, going to keep us posted. Maybe she's gone back on again. You should check that out next. I'll show a photo around the girls tomorrow, see if they know I am. Seen the echo? There's a page and a half of condolences for Michael. <laughs> Listen to this one. They say that time's a healer, but Mike, we are not so sure, because every time we think of you, we miss you more and more. Mm. Is Patrick okay? It's all right. He's still unconscious. He's no worse, anyway. I want to move somewhere private. I don't want to move him that far yet. Uh, Alpha Lager, quite a mile, please. It might be more secure. Yeah, well, that's what we wanted to ask you about. I mean, if he makes it, Sullivan's going to kill him anyway. John didn't say. You asked him? Yeah, I asked him. <sighs> Bastard. All right, Julie, you hear him? I... Listen, Callie, I don't want you to go to the funeral tomorrow. The police will be crawling with National Crime Squad, and you don't want to end up in any of their snapshots, do you? Well, I'm not going. And I don't think Joey or Therese are either. Look, I thought, um, I might attend. You know, for all of us. It's up to you. Seriously, Callie, you stay away. What's the matter? I'm dead anyway. Is that right, Howard? Well, I think he could lose his job, yeah. Especially if he goes to the funeral. Callie! You're not giving up on me, are you? You're going home? Yeah. It's a big day tomorrow.
do not stand by my grave and weep. I am not there. I do not sleep. I am a thousand winds that blow. I am diamond glints on snow. I am sunlight on ripened grain. I am gentle autumn rain. When you awake in morning's hush, I am the swift uplifting rush of quiet birds and circled flight. I am the soft stars that shine at night. Do not stand by my grave and cry. I am not there. I did not die. here to see you, brother. It's not on the list. I'd like to see him. I saw you came today. Along with all them busies taking photos. There was a time, years ago, I knocked over this bottle of holy water. It was in the shape of the Immaculate Mary. My man brought it back from Ireland. She blamed our Mikey. Locked him in the cellar. He screamed and screamed and screamed. He was trying to dig his way out through the wall with a nail. When my dad let him out, he didn't talk for two days. He was always such a happy kid, aren't I? And you wonder where it all went wrong? I he'd been moving him around the hospital. You don't need to do that now. Okay. I'll be seeing you at the inquest. Where's your idiot, Callahan? We well, came in early to give his formal statement. It shouldn't be long. Well, look, I can't wait. I'm due in court. Um, can you tell him to call me? And it's about the inquest, okay? So try not to forget. Who was that? Sarah Hardin, CPS solicitor. She doesn't like Callie much, does she? <laughs> Are those guys laughing at me? Why would they be laughing at you? Do you still want to change partners? Do you think Callahan's going to survive all this? Honestly, I don't know. So what are my options, Frank? What, Frank? I forget I mentioned it. Um, what about the fuel list, though? Word is he's gone off to London. Could be gone a long time. Close it down, then, eh? Want it? It's just I was in CID yesterday and there were these guys there and they're just looking at me really weirdly. And I'm not paranoid or anything. I'm sure it's not. You finished? Yeah. Listen, Anna Collins has turned up. Hello, Anna. We're glad you're okay. These are the police that were looking for you. I'm sorry for your trouble. Yeah, thanks for everything. That's okay. Can we have a quick word in private, please, Anna? 
What about? It's all right, it won't take long. Well, there's no need for that. She's here, she's okay, so that's it really, isn't it? Yeah, it's just a few things you want to clear up. Like what? Come on, Tom, let's go for a coffee. Shut up. Anything you've got to say, you can say in front of us. What's the problem, Mr. Collins? It's okay, Dad. You'd shut up. You've caused enough trouble as it is. Your daughter's not a minor. You have no legal right to be here when we question her. Can you please just leave us alone? And we're going to question her anyway. You've caused enough trouble already. She looks like a whore, that one. How are you feeling? Anna, did you tell your parents about the abortion? You're not going to say anything, are you? Not to Sean, neither. No. What did you tell them? I said I was on a train coming back from North Wales. And I started to bleed. And then I woke up in here, which is true. But you didn't tell them why you went to North Wales. How did you hear about the clinic? A friend of mine. Her sister had it done there. Is that why you borrowed the money off Sean? I'd saved up the rest myself. You didn't tell him what you were going to do? He'd have gone mad. Why? Did he want the baby? Did you tell him you were pregnant? It's a terrible thing. I killed a baby and I'm never going to be forgiven. It's never going to be all right again. I killed my baby. She's a bit better now. Thanks. How does a girl like that end up with a caution for prostitution? I mean, I've seen guilt before, but... That was unbelievable. I mean, it just doesn't make any sense. Well, maybe it does. Maybe it's a Catholic thing. Yeah, it messes with your head. Yeah, her head is definitely messed up. Anyway. Can I ask you something? What? Do I look like a whore? Not particularly. Not particularly. Okay. Oh, that's good. Thanks. Well, hang on a minute. I want to talk to Anna again. Why? We're all done here, aren't we? It's just... A Catholic girl would never get rid of a baby unless she absolutely had to. So? So why did she have to? Not because of Sean. Oh, um, maybe there was something wrong with it. Fetal abnormality or something. It's got to be worse than that. I don't, I don't it's got to be worse than anything. Oh, Christ. Father of your baby. What do you want? I'm only going to say this once. Just keep away from her. Or I'm going to come looking for you. You got that? What do you want about? For the last time I looked, Mr. Collins. It's a crime to have sexual intercourse with your daughter. What did you say? Thanks. Text 
textbook interview, really. We'll never get a prosecution, will we? Not if she won't testify, even then. So what should we do? Write him out to the social services? No. Write him out to the priest. Callahan. I told you to call me. I did. So, just exactly what's this I hear about your new partner? Getting herself thrown out the meth for giving her super a blowjob. And if the fat slag tries anything with you, my darling, I'll kill him. Mm. Hi. Hi. Some rumours going round. Joanna. Uh, look, yeah, I'm sorry, it was my fault. I made up some stuff about Zapoli for a laugh and told Frankie not to tell anyone. I didn't. And now it's all over Liverpool. Honest, I never. Shut up, Frank. What's so funny about that? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I think it's hilarious. I really do. Hmm? Yeah. It gives a shit about what people think anyway. <sighs> right. I'm off back down the pub. <laughs> yeah. So, what's the big secret with you and Sarah then? It's unprofessional. Plus, she's married. Oh. Would you disapprove? Oh, I don't know the situation. What are you thinking? I'm just thinking about the inquest. What would you do if they kicked you off? No idea. Don't worry, you'll be fine. Constable Callahan. For the benefit of the jury, I want to take you into some of the background of this rather unusual case. Now, just before his death, you were bringing a prosecution against the deceased, Michael Sullivan, at Liverpool Crown Court, were you not? Yes. And your case against him collapsed on a technicality, an embarrassing blunder by your squad. Yes. It might then be reasonable to assume that you and your squad felt humiliated by Michael Sullivan. It was just one of those things. They happen. They certainly do to you, Constable. Now, in bringing this case against Michael Sullivan, you relied upon information supplied by an informant, did you not? Yes. And this informant was your brother, Patrick Callahan, was it not? Yes. A known drug user with a history of heroin abuse. That happens too. And an associate of Michael Sullivan. Well, if he wasn't, he wouldn't be much use as an informant, would he? Indeed. Would you describe this as standard police procedure, Constable? I took a calculated risk to arrest a known and dangerous criminal. As did your brother. Now, once Mr. Sullivan walked free, you must have feared for your brother's life. Yes. It occurred to me. Only occurred to you. Michael Sullivan had convictions for assault and grievous bodily harm. And the Sullivans are a family with known criminal connections. It occurred to me. What did you do about the perceived threat? I arranged to get my brother out of Liverpool. Not very successfully. For only a few hours later, your brother was fighting for his very life. The victim of multiple gunshot wounds. How did this make you feel, Constable? What do you mean, how did it make me feel? Did you burn for revenge against him? Did you want to do to him what he'd done to your brother? <coughs> I should remind you, Mr. Andrews, that these proceedings are intended purely to establish a cause of death. This is not a criminal trial. I felt what I always felt. That Michael Sullivan was a danger to himself and everyone around him. He was mentally ill and needed proper treatment in a secure unit. So, acting on information received, you and the members of your squad went to arrest Michael Sullivan. You entered the premises, made the arrest, handcuffed Mr. Sullivan, and then you took him yourself through to a separate room away from your colleagues. I took him through to the bedroom where his clothes were. And you found yourself alone in a room with a man who had tried to kill your brother. A man who would perhaps try again when he got the chance. And then a few moments later, Michael Sullivan conveniently falls from the window of the bedroom. He stepped out before I could stop him. 
I just wasn't expecting it. Are there any witnesses to support your story? No. Not even the other members of your squad, who might normally be expected to back up a colleague in trouble. They weren't in the room. They weren't in the room. That went pretty well. Ladies and gentlemen, you're being asked to make a judgment on a situation which lacks hard evidence one way or another. Do you believe that Michael Sullivan, a diagnosed schizophrenic, under the influence, as we have heard he was, of a cocktail of mind-altering substances, when faced with the certainty of a life behind bars, took it into his mind to evade justice once again and take his own life? Or are you persuaded that a police officer acting out of motives of personal revenge deliberately took the life of a helpless man. Jory's back. Ladies and gentlemen, have you reached your verdict? We have. We find the deceased, Michael Sullivan, committed suicide. You were rubbish. Thanks. Listen, they're organising a party for you down the border. Do you want to lift? Tell them I'm going to go and see my brother and go home, yeah? Okay. Thanks. Will you be appealing against the murder? Do you think this is another police cover up? The Sullivan family accepts without reservation the account provided by the police officers and the verdict of the jury. We will seek no further action, civil or otherwise, against any party in this matter. For us, this tragedy is over. What price did you do? One night, sometime, I'll be behind you.